Hi everyone, my name is Tom and in the previous devlog I was talking about changing my strategy on working on the game. Which means I drop most of the social media interactions, so I barely post anymore and I'm focusing on making the demo of the game. So what I've been up to for the last two weeks, I decided to write down all the tasks that I require to make a bigger beta and a demo. All the things that I want to add to the game, things that I need to change, bugs, all of that. I made a weekly to-do list with all the, the tasks that I wrote down. The first two weeks of July went very well, I was able to keep up with the schedule. So let's take a quick look at what changed. I added key rebinding, it's something that was on my to-do list for a while. It's a good thing to have both for accessibility issues and because you can't assume that all players play the same and giving them the option to change the controls is a good idea. I finally got around to changing the materials of the bridge, because for the longest time it had textures that were too realistic for my game, it didn't match the style, it was out of place, so I took a stab at Blender, tried creating textures myself, as you can see the floor is not the best, but it was my first attempt at creating textures. For other parts I decided to use materials, which I think work pretty well with the style of the game. And for the pillars of the bridge, I tried using textures, I tried different solutions, but that just didn't work with the style. So I decided to do what Sinti assets use in their packs, where wherever you have bricks, instead of having a fancy texture, they slap these bricks around and just give you the feel that it's something that is made out of bricks. And I think it looks pretty good with my game. Obviously it's not realistic, but it just gives you the cartoonish feel that I'm aiming for. So overall I'm really happy with the result. I'm gonna work more on the floor obviously, but so far so good. I like it. It's much better than what I had before, that's for sure. During the first week I was experimenting with many things. I tried for example changing the logic when I spawn shops and factories to a different approach, but that didn't work out, so I, I dropped that. I was fixing bugs and doing other minor changes. During the second week, I was working more on implementing different systems. For example, this feature I saw in someone else's devlog, where they changed the view of the game depending on different stats, and I decided it's a really nice idea to add to my game, because at some point where you will have hundreds of shops and factories, you won't want to check each one of them individually. So this is still a work in progress, and it's mostly used for the factories, but you can toggle between these two views, where you have the regular view, and then you go into the stats view, what I call it for now. So it works mostly for the factories, you can see the production, without having to go into the factory itself and see what's going on with it. In the future, I will add more information in here and I'll change the design a bit but I think it will give the players a quicker view of what's going on with their game. And the biggest change that I was working on that players probably won't notice but it took me a few days to work and rework and throw away some work. <laughs> it was very messy but it's the Windows system. Tycoon games require a lot of UI, and this UI is come in different shapes and forms, usually in the form of some type of windows or menus. This is a very annoying system to build, because like in your operating system, when you click on a window, you want it to be in focus. So for example, I have the marketplace in focus right now, and if I want the property center, it should come to the foreground, and if I press escape, it should know that I want to close that property window and not anything else. And if I press in escape again, it's gonna take me to the game pause because nothing is in focus. Another feature that I added was the option to move menus around. This is something that was pointed out to me, that these windows look like they are supposed to move around, but I didn't have that option. So I listened and I added that option. And I think it's a good idea because Tycoon games often require you to have multiple windows open and you want to move them around to arrange it as you seem fit to you. There are still some issues with it. For example, right now I'm moving the property center. And if I want to go to the storage, you can see that the marketplace takes over the property center. And I would assume that you will have these windows ordered marketplace, on top of it you'll have the property center, and on top of both of those you'll have the storage. But as you can see for some reason it doesn't work here, and I'm still trying to figure that out. These were the changes for the past two weeks. Next I want to run another small playtest. When I say small I mean a handful of people just to see um, how everything works so far, what, what needs to be changed, what's good, what's bad, how the game feels overall. And for the next two weeks, together with the playtest, I want to make a new trailer, 
I want to add more content. So all the hot dog stands, lemonade stands and other stuff that I was talking about before. More bug fixes, adding a research tree because I think this will give the player some feeling of progression in the game. Also need to add sounds because right now the game is dead quiet, there is nothing in it and it breaks and ruins the immersion. I'll be going over the latest notes. I want to start balancing the game, I've been talking about it for a long time and then I dropped the idea and focused on the gameplay itself and now it's time to start working on the balancing because right now uh, the game is not balanced at all. <laughs> you, factories don't cost you anything, shops are too expensive, um, ingredients when you sell them don't give you nothing. Um, so yeah, that, that needs a lot of work. If I have time, I want to try and change the network system that I'm using. Because right now I'm using Unity's relay service, which costs money. And there is a solution by Steam that gives you the same service, but for free. So I'm assuming this is a good idea. <laughs> we will see if I will be able to implement it. I'm at least going to try and look into it so I can figure out if it's a good idea or not for the future. And then it's going to be testing the multiplayer. The goal is really to make a bigger beta in August. So when I'm saying a bigger beta, that's more than just a handful of people, maybe 10, 20, depends on how many people actually want to try the game out. And then we take it from there. Because really the plan is uh, have this July grind to work on as many things as I possibly can. Have the bigger beta in August. Then in September, release a demo, prepare it for October Steam Next Fest, and then hopefully in November, release the game. That's the long-term plan, but we will see how it goes. Obviously, I'm a solo dev, so plans can change depending on my ability to implement everything. So yeah, that was the update for this devlog. Please wishlist the game on Steam, that really helps. And I'll see you next time.